Karl Friedrich Otto Wolf was a high-ranking member of the Nazi SS, ultimately holding the rank of SS Obergruppen Far one quarter air and general of the Waffen SS. He became chief of personal staff to the Reich for one quarter rare and SS liaison officer to Hitler until his replacement in 1943. He ended World War II as the supreme commander of all SS forces in Italy. After the war, Wolf was also a central witness as to the alleged plot to kidnap Pope Pius XII. Early life, Karl Friedrich Otto Wolf was born in Darmstadt, Germany. His father was a district court judge, who called him Carol, which stayed Karl's nickname until his death. Brought up agnostically, after the family spent two years in Schwert, they returned to Darmstadt where Wolf was educated at the local Catholic school. First World War, after Abita, Wolf joined the Imperial German Army at age 16, during the First World War. He underwent four months of military training as an Fehmjunker, then volunteered on September 5, 1917 to serve on the Western Front. Commissioned an officer the following year, he was awarded the Iron Cross Second Class for bravery. Wolf decided to make the army his career. After the armistice, he joined the Hess Infantry Regiment, and for actions during the war received the Iron Cross First Class. Interwar period, Wolf was demobilized in 1920 as a result of the Treaty of Versailles, which reduced the strength of the German Reich Swiss. He became a banker, joining the Bethmann family bank in Frankfurt, where he underwent a two-year apprenticeship. In July 1922 Wolf was engaged to Frieda von Rimheld, whom he married the following year. They moved to Munich, where Wolf worked for Deutsche Bank. Due to raging inflation, however, he was unemployed two years later. He then joined the public relations firm at Expedition Wolf of von Dankenmann. On July 1, 1925 he started his own company, at Expedition Karl Wolf, von Rimheld. Nazi Party and SS, the 1931 Deutsche Bank economic crisis convinced him that only the more radical parties were capable of resolving the economic and political dilemmas in Germany. For him the only option was the more extreme right. Drawn by the ideal of a reborn Germany after this economic crisis, Wolf joined the NSDAP in July 1931. His membership number was 695,131. His SS membership number was 14,235. Wolf still worked in his own public relations firm after training in the Reich for one quarter rare SS school system. He served in a mustering squad in Munich, and later was commissioned as an SS Sturm for one quarter rare in February 1932. In 1933, after the Nazi Party came to power, Wolf became a full-time political party member and was promoted to SS Stammhort for one quarter rare to serve as SS military liaison officer to the army. On March 8, 1933 he became a member of the Reichstag. In June 1933 with the leap from volunteer to full member of the SS, the associated financial security allowed him to relinquish his previous profession and to sell his company. He was personally recruited by SS Commander Heinrich Himmler to head the office of the Reich for one quarter as personal staff. Wolf became Himmler's adjutant on June 15, 1933. By 1937 he was an SS Group N Far one quarter air and considered third in command of the entire SS. He was a rival to Reinhard Heydrich. This competition was accentuated by Himmler. However, at this point his friendship with the chief of the Reich Sitcher he had shopped M.T. Heydrich was at its height, with whom he helped certain parties in conflict with Nazi party doctrine, including some Jews, to leave Germany. Second World War, as was later revealed in the 1964 trial, during the early part of the Second World War Wolf was probably Himmler's eyes and ears in Hitler's headquarters. Here at the center of power he would undoubtedly be aware of all significant events or could easily have access to the relevant information. Apart from the information passing across his desk, Wolf received copies of all letters from SS officers, and his friends at this point included the organizer of Operation Reinhard Odilo Globocnik. His later denial of knowledge of Holocaust activities may be plausible only at the detailed level, but not of the extent of atrocities by the Nazi regime. For example, as the liquidation of the Warsaw Ghetto resulted in rail transport bottlenecks, 
Wolf telephoned Deputy Right Minister of Transport Dr. Albert Gans in one quarter lair. In a later letter dated August 13, 1942, Wolf thanked Gans in one quarter lair for his assistance. I notice with particular pleasure your report that for 14 days a train has been going daily with members of the chosen people to Tblinka. I've made contact with the participating agencies, so that a smooth implementation of the entire action is ensured. After the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich, Wolf fell out of favor with Himmler. After making Wolf a full SS Obergruppe and far one quarter rare, Himmler dismissed him in 1942. In 1943, Hitler assigned Wolf an SS adjutant to Benito Mussolini's Italian government, personally granting him equivalent general's rank in the Waffen SS. When Italy surrendered to the Allies, from February to October 1943, Wolf became the higher SS and police leader of Italy, and served as the military governor of northern Italy. By now, he had a beautiful blonde mistress, Ingeborg Countess Bernstorff, a widow whose youngest son, Weidekind, had been fathered by him. Although divorce was frowned upon for SS officers, Inge demanded that he divorce his wife of 20 years, Frieda von Rimheld, and marry her. Wolf had other motivations to marry Inge besides love. His wife was dark-haired and brown-eyed, and so were their children. He knew that it would be much better for his future in the Nazi hierarchy if he had a blonde wife, who could give him blonde children. On March 6, 1943, his divorce from Frieda was finalized. He had gone over Himmler's head and obtained permission directly from Hitler. Thereafter on March 9 he married Inchborg. They eventually separated in 1969, although they remained formally married, and Inchborg took up residence in Switzerland. As the Nazi army retreated and Hitler dismissed various commanders, from 1943 to 1945, Wolf was the supreme SS and police leader of the Italian area. By 1945 Wolf was acting military commander of Italy. By now again an agreement with Himmler on the issue of futility of continuing the war, from February 1945 Wolf under Operation Sunrise took over command and management of intermediaries including Swiss national Max Weibel, in order to make contact in Switzerland with the headquarters of the U.S. Office of Strategic Services, under Alan W. Dulles. After initially meeting with Dulles in Lucerne on March 8, 1945, Wolf reluctantly negotiated the surrender of all German forces in Italy, ending the war in Italy six days before the war in Germany, on May 2, 1945. Testimony concerning the plot to kidnap Pope Pius XII SS General Karl Wolf claimed while testifying at the Nuremberg trials that he had disobeyed an order from Hitler to kidnap the Pope and instead sneaked into the Vatican to warn the pontiff. Most other allegations of a plot to kidnap Pius XII are based on a claimed 1972 document written by Wolf that Avonara Detalia published in 1991 and on personal interviews with Wolf before his death in 1984. Wolf maintained that Hitler summoned Wolf to his office on September 13, 1943, and that Hitler stated, I have a special mission for you, Wolf. It will be your duty not to discuss it with anyone before I give you permission to do so. Only Raish for one quarter rare SS knows about it. Do you understand? I want you and your troops to occupy Vatican City as soon as possible, secure its files and art treasures, and take the Pope and Curia to the north. I do not want him to fall into the hands of the Allies or to be under their political pressure and influence. The Vatican is already a nest of spies and a center of anti-national socialist propaganda. A report in the Italian newspaper Avenera in 2005 suggested that Hitler ordered Wolf to kidnap Pope Pius XII, but in collaboration with Germany's Vatican diplomat Ernst von Weiser Cohen CKER, Wolf refused. Wolf also removed important art treasures from Monte Cassino, and went till on the day that the Allies entered Rome, leaving German forces immobilized. According to historian Peter Gumpel, Pope Pius XII told senior bishops that should he be arrested by the Nazis, his resignation would become effective immediately, paving the way for a successor, according to documents in the Vatican's secret archives. On June 16, 2009 Diego Vanzi wrote in Avenera, four days after Benito Mussolini had been arrested on July 25, 1943 on King Victor Emmanuel III's orders. 
they stayed at the Hotel Danielli. Their official purpose was to meet with Italia Euro unregistered trademark as head of counter espionage, General Serama Copyright to evaluate the state of the Pact of Friendship and Alliance between Germany and Italy. The article cites Col von Leusen's service diary entry under that date as saying 0743, flight to Venice with the head of service and Colonel Freytag for a meeting with General Arma Copyright, head of Italian counterintelligence. And then, 3143, back from service trip to Venice. It states that all three Germans had left the Reichsicherheitsamt. Gestapo headquarters in Berlin with the information that Hitler was intent on having Pope Pius XII and King Emmanuel III kidnapped and killed in retaliation on the Italians for the imprisonment of Mussolini. Colonel Erwin von Leusen testified in his deposition at the Nuremberg trials on February 1, 1946. Freytag von Loring Oven was greatly disturbed upon hearing of Hitler's plan and said that Italians should be forewarned, this being the primary purpose of the flight to Venice. Arma copyright remained in office only for another few weeks but he passed the information he had received and eventually it reached Ernst von Weiser currency CKER, Third Reich ambassador to the Holy See who started making inquiries, first with Field Marshal Kesselring, then with Capilla in Rome, with Wolf in Milan, in Berlin. All questions said they were unaware of such plan, but since no longer secret, it had to be abandoned. Hitler, growing suspicious of the Abwehr, and of Canaris at its helm, eventually fired him and abolished the agency on February 18, 1944, strengthening Heinrich Himmler's control over the military. Canaris was cashiered and given the empty title of Chief of the Office of Commercial and Economic Warfare, then arrested on July 23, 1944, in the aftermath of the July 20 plot against Hitler and executed on April 9, 1945, in the Flesenba one quarter G concentration camp along with Oster, his deputy. Bessel Freytag von Loring Oven committed suicide at Mauwald in East Prussia on July 26, 1944, learning he was to be arrested by the Gestapo for his participation in the July 20 plot. Of the three who met with General Armour copyright on July 29 the Euro 30, 1943 only Lausen survived the war. Having been sent to the Eastern Front, he escaped notice and after the war he voluntarily testified against Hermann Gar Paragraph Ring and 21 other defendants at the Nuremberg War Crimes Trials in 1945 a Euro 1946. Lausen was the first witness for the prosecution, as the sole survivor of the Abwehr resistance. Later life, arrested on May 13, 1945 he was imprisoned in Schaparagraf Neuburg. During the Nuremberg Trials, Wolf was allowed to escape prosecution by providing evidence against his fellow Nazis, and was then transferred in January 1947 to the British prison facility in Minden. Although released in 1947, he had been indicted by the post-war German government as part of the denazification process. Detained under house arrest, after a German trial Wolf was sentenced in November 1948 to five years imprisonment due to his membership of the SS. Seven months later his sentence was reduced to four years and he was released. Wolf worked after his discharge as a representative for the ad department of a magazine and took his family to his new residence in Stornberg. Until his rearrest in 1962, it is alleged that Wolf worked for the CIA, while continuing to successfully build his reformed public relations firm. In 1962 during the trial in Israel of Adolf Eichmann, Evidence showed that Wolf had organized the deportation of Italian Jews in 1944. Wolf was again tried in West Germany and in 1964 was convicted of deporting 300,000 Jews to the Chblinka extermination camp, the deportation of Italian Jews to Auschwitz, and the massacre of Italian partisans in Belarus. Sentenced to 15 years imprisonment in Straubing, Wolf served only part of his sentence and was released in 1969 due to ill health with his full civil rights restored in 1971. Wolf has been a controversial figure because many believe he was far more privy to the internal workings of the SS and its extermination activities than he acknowledged. He claimed to have known nothing about the Nazi extermination camps, even though he was a senior general in the SS. In reality, Wolf was a part of Himmler's entourage during several of his visits to the concentration camps, as documented by photos from the Bundesarchiv. After his release, 
Wolf was quiet for a while and retired in Austria. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, Wolf returned to public life, frequently lecturing on the internal workings of the SS and his relationship with Himmler. This resulted in him appearing in television documentaries including The World at War, saying that he witnessed an execution of 20 or 30 partisan prisoners in Minsk in 1941 with Himmler, going so far as to describe the splatter of brains on Himmler's coat. During this period, Wolf also became involved with former Stern journalist Gerd Heidemann and Stuttgart military dealer Konrad Kujol, for whom he in part authenticated the later discredited Hitler diaries. Asked to attend the trial of Messrs Heidemann and Kujol, Wolf declined. He was still in bad health and on July 17, 1984, he died in a hospital in Rosenheim. His death brought his name up again in all major German newspapers, where he was described as one of the most enigmatic figures of the Nazi regime. He was buried in the cemetery at Pen am Schiem See on 21 July 1984. In the preface to the biography of Wolf, Claus Sibyl writes that he could be described as a classic case study for the Nazi representative of the upper bourgeoisie, Wolf himself is and remains the idealist, always wanted the good. And because he himself had never conceived or planned something evil, Though there were still so many crimes happening around him, he almost never noticed anything like this. Wolf was portrayed by Vesely Lanovoy in the Soviet TV series 17 Moments of Spring in a major plotline concerning Sunrise Crossword and meeting with Dulles. In the 1991 miniseries Selling Hitler, based on the Hitler Diaries case, he was played by John Paul. He was also portrayed by Walter Gotel in the 1983 film The Scarlet and the Black as General Max Helm. Summary of SS Career, SS Number, 14235, Nazi Party Number, 695131, Primary Positions, Purser Paragraph Nurture Stab Reich for One Quarter Rare SS, Supreme SS and Police Leader of Italy, Waffen SS Service, General Lieutenant der SS for Far One Quarter Gungstrup, General der Waffen SS, Dates of Rank, SS Anwar Currency RTER, October 10, 1931, SS Man, October 19, 1931, SS Shah for one quarter air, December 11, 1931, SS Trupp Air one quarter air, January 19, 1932, SS Sturm for one quarter air, February 18, 1932, SS Stumhort for one quarter air, January 30, 1933, SS Sturm Banfar one quarter air, November 9, 1933, SS Obersturm Banfar one quarter air, January 30, 1934, SS Standart in Far one quarter air, April 20, 1934, SS Oberfar one quarter air, July 4, 1934, SS Brigade Far one quarter air, November 9, 1935, SS Gruppen Far one quarter air, January 30, 1937, SS Obergruppen Far one quarter air, January 30, 1942, during several interviews in the 1970s, Wolf claimed that in April 1945, he had been granted a personal promotion by Adolf Hitler to the rank of SS Oberstgruppen Far One Quarter Rare. During the filming of the World at War series, Wolf further showed to producers a display case showing the tri-pip collar insignia and shoulder boards of an SS Colonel General. This late war promotion, however, is not annotated in Wolf's SS service record nor has any supporting documentation ever been produced affirming Wolf's claim. Furthermore, photographs from the time of his capture in Italy by the Allies clearly show a lesser rank insignia worn on his SS uniform. For this reason, most historical texts indicate the highest rank Wolf ever held was that of Obergruppen Far One Quarter Rare. Awards, German Cross in Gold, Iron Cross, 1914, First and Second Class, 1939, First and Second Class. War Merit Cross, First and Second Class with Swords, Honor Cross of the World War 1914-1918, Golden Party Badge, Honor Chevron for the Old Guard, SA Sports Badge, German National Sports Badge, Olympic Games Decoration, Nazi Party Long Service Award, SS Long Service Award, Sudetenland Medal, Rommel Medal. Sword of Honor of the Reich for one quarter rare SS, SS Honor Ring, SS Juluchta, Foreign Awards, 
Grand Cross of the Order of the Crown, Grand Officer of the Order of the Roman Eagle, Other Service, German Army, 1917-1919. See also, Glossary of Nazi Germany, List of Nazi Party Leaders and Officials, List of SS Personnel, Operation Sunrise. References Sources, Von Lingen, Xten. Conspiracy of Silence how the Old Boys of American Intelligence Shielded SS General Carl Wolf from Prosecution. Holocaust and Genocide Studies 22, 74 Euro 109 DOI, 10.1093 DCN 004. Yerger, Mark C. L. G. Main SS. At Glen, Pennsylvania, Schiffler Publishing. ISBN 0 7643 0145 4. Kesman, Dan. A Special Mission, Hitler's Plot to Seize the Vatican and Kidnap Pope Pius XII. ISBN 0-306-81468-4. External links, Carl Wolf at the Internet Movie Database.